Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good evening. Ay, vamos, la pongan a saber es en Spanish, just in case. Solo por cualquier cosa voy a decir esto en español. Um, recuerden sus camaritas encendidas, requisito de Insafor, cámaras encendidas, tratar de participar lo que más se pueda. Ok. And then, vamos a pasar a asistencia más adelante. Deme un minuto, no sé por qué no me cargó el background. And this is unacceptable. <laughs> Bear with me. Just a minute, guys. Let me know if you're seeing the background. Maybe since you have any phone to work You should be saying. So I see we have five participants connected. I want to introduce myself to you guys. Um, but there is only five connected. <laughs> so we're gonna do more than once tonight, okay? So um, my name is Bikri Arevalo. I will be your teacher from now on for the next four weeks. Um, your previous teacher, um, she was not able to continue with, the um, with this module. So I will be in charge of helping you guys, guiding you through this module. And of course, right, I'm here to help you guys, to serve you. So take advantage, right? Um, I think it's good to tell you that every teacher has different methodologies to teach you, but then we all have one goal in common. We all want you guys to learn English, right? To speak the best English possible. Si en algún punto no quieren que hable en inglés, let me know, déjenmelo saber. I was told because you're intermediate five that I was full English with you. Pero si ustedes necesitan que no hable full inglés, me lo dejan saber, right? So it's up to you. Ustedes me dicen cómo lo prefieren. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, we have seven participants now. So, les estaba diciendo, vamos a poder repetir esto un par de veces en lo que se conectan todos. Mi nombre es Vicri Arevalo y yo voy a ser su nueva teacher por estas cuatro semanas en lo que concluimos, completamos más bien el módulo cinco. Así que estoy a la orden para ustedes. Cualquier duda, pregunta, refuerzo. Yo estoy para servirles a ustedes, right? Les mencionaba um, hace un par de minutos que es bueno siempre notar o aclarar, ¿verdad? Todos los maestros tenemos diferentes metodologías, pero compartimos una meta en común, que es que ustedes hablen inglés y no cualquier inglés, que hablen lo mejor posible, ¿de acuerdo? Así que estamos aquí para guiarlos. Now, um, I would like to get to know you guys so I can have an idea and I can address you when you're participating. So I think it would be good. I know you did this last week when you started the module, but we're gonna do it one more time so we get to know each other, right? Because I don't know you guys and you don't know me. So let's start introducing ourselves one by one. Um, de nuevo les repito, si prefieren que hable solo inglés o solo español o los dos, ustedes déjenme saber. Yo me adapto a ustedes, ¿de acuerdo? Now let's see. Thank you. So we have 10 participants. Vamos, um, if I have volunteers, someone that wants to introduce themselves, I will be delighted to hear you. Pueden ir levantando la mano siempre para participar y vamos a hacer lo mismo. Nos vamos a presentar su nombre, a dónde trabajan y aquí es algo sobre ustedes que, que quieran compartir. Okay? Do we have volunteers that want to start? Let's start with Miss Wendy Maribel, please. My name is Wendy. I live in Santana. I work in a travel agency in Genesis Travel. And um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And that's it. That's basically all you have to do, right? Just say your name, where are you from, where do you work, and if whatever you want to mention anything about yourself, more than perfect. Um, tengo alguien en el chat, dice Ana Raquel, teacher, can you repeat the indications? 
Todavía no he dado indicaciones, Ana, solo me estaba presentando, pero ya lo voy a repetir también al final, por los que se conecten, um, los, en, mientras se conectan todos, voy a repetirlo al final de nuevo. Uh, así, ahorita los estoy conociendo a ustedes, así que veamos, who wants, who goes next? Volunteers, o lo voy diciendo según los veo en la lista, veo a Jorge Humberto por acá. Present teacher. Go ahead, Jorge. Uh, my name is Jorge Vela. You can call me Jorge. I'm a civil engineer. I, I live in San Salvador, but I work in San Miguel from wow, Monday. That's far. <laughs> I'm, I'm here in San Miguel, and Friday uh, I come back to San Salvador. Okay. That's a big effort, Jorge. <laughs> Nice, thank you. Okay, as well, Manuel Antonio, please. Hello, good evening. Hi. Teacher, nice to meet you. I'm glad. Nice to meet you too, Manuel. Where do you work? Okay. Where do you live, Manuel? What do you do? <laughs> I can see you, teacher. <laughs> tell, us you about, tell us about yourself, Manuel. You can answer okay. me. I can see you. Why not? Can everybody see me? Yes, teacher. All right. I don't know, yeah. Manuel, what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay, my, my camera. Okay, teacher. Yeah. Well, my name is Manuel Antonio Palma. Uh, I, I work for Deloitte El Salvador. Uh, I live in San Salvador. Uh, this is the my second uh, module after three uh, two years before the pandemic, and well, uh, I am sociable. Uh, I like to make uh, any friends uh, anywhere, and right. yes, uh, uh, what? Perfect. Nice to meet you, Manuel. Thank you. So we know Wendy, we know Jorge, and we know Manuel. Let's continue. I see Ana Raquel here, please. Hi, my name is Raquel Villalta. I work with entrepreneurship. I live in San Salvador. Uh, this is my first uh, level within this okay. corporative. Wow, your first level is module five, intermediate, nice. <laughs> that means you have a good level, Anna. Thank you. Let's continue. I see Carlos Antonio here. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Carlos Escobar. Uh, I live in Sonsonate. Uh, I work in the, in Cotecna, in the board, uh, La Chadura. Wow, that's really far. <laughs> Okay. Nice yeah. meeting you, Carlos. Nice Where's to, your nice camera, you. Carlos? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice I cannot you. see <laughs> as well, Carlos. Let's continue with Cristia Eraso, please. Good evening, Miss. Hi. And good evening, everyone. And my name is Cristia Eraso, and I have 20 years old, 29 years old. And I work in Iron Man as production planner. And this is my second level with English Corporativo. Um, and that's all. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Chris. Yeah. Uh, Chris, yeah, it is, right? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a number. All right. Just remember when we say our age, we say I am. We don't, in Espanol, we, we say tenemos, but in English, we say estamos, de este that we are. So what I said, I say that I have. have yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, don't worry. Said. It's just for you to remember. <laughs> These things happen. Don't worry. <laughs> and this is the perfect. Um, I, I, think, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, guys, I, something I really like from online classes is that it's, I feel it's a safe space. It's better than when you're in person. If you're in person and you make a mistake, everybody looks at you, right? But in if you're online, it's like, you don't worry. You know, like, to just correct yourself when life continues, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry, just sorry. a reminder. Okay, let's continue with go with um, Juan Carlos Rivas. I don't know if you already yes, introduced yourself. Juan Carlos Rivas. Okay. Uh, 
I live in, in San Salvador. Uh -huh. I work in Mobile Plus, the service center of Samsung. And I'm sociable. All right. And sometimes shy. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> <laughs> depends on the weather. <laughs> and okay. that, uh, that's it. Nice, thank you. Let's continue with, I see Juan de Dios, Javier. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Juan de Dios, Javier Mejia. I live in Zacatecoluca. I have been working in San Salvador. Uh, I am 30, 41 years old. I work in a factory for six, six years. I am the production manager. All right, thank you, Juan. Um, let's see, Maria Concepcion. Maria Concepcion. Are you there? Sorry, teacher, I don't <laughs> speak in the moment. Oh, okay, you're not able to speak. All right. Um, vamos con Nelson Gabarrete. Hello, morning. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello, my name is Nelson Gavarrete. I like, I like to be guy, uh, be my last, my last man. I work in veterinary world. Uh, I like to visit the, the cruise uh, early. I love Christian music. All right, thank you, Nelson. And now we go with Mario Villeda, please. Good night, good night. Right. Sorry, I just took a few seconds ago. Oh, all right. We're just introducing ourselves, Mario. You just gotta say where you live, what you do, and that's it. <laughs> okay. So what I what I gonna do today? I oh. know. Oh, what do you do like for a living? <laughs> For a living, mm -hmm. um, actually, I work in Claro, okay. like a uh, business administration or a team. Yeah, team. I visit, uh, I visit Sonsonate and Ava Japan. All right, thank you, Maria. The, the, the stores, see the stores, oh, okay. what, they, what they need in every day, see how many clients and this the the stores mm -hmm. all right thank you mario nice meeting you let's go with silvia suleima rodriguez please hi good evening hi my name is silvia suleima rodriguez and i, I live in santa ana i am a lawyer and i work in a financial company for 11 years in All Santa right. Ana. All right, nice meeting you, Silvia. Um, we're going with Tatiana Michelle, please. Uh, hello, teacher. My name is Tatiana. Uh, I work at Telus International as a back office agent uh, for uh, one year. And now, uh, well, I live in San Salvador with my mom and my son. His name is Gabriel and he's 11 years old. And I have been in, at Inglés Corporativo since I think February. I have around six months. Mm -hmm. All right, nice meeting you, Tatiana. Nice now meeting. we're going with Olga Marlene, please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Olga Gomez. I live in Colón. I work in San Salvador. And I have a, a family of three members. 
and I have you know, changed time with my family and work in the park sometime. Okay. All right, nice meeting you, Olga. Um, am I missing someone? Me faltó alguien de presentarse. Did I miss someone? Ahora es cuando me dice yo, me falto yo. Or has everybody participated right now with their names and their info? All right, for the ones that connected last, I'm gonna repeat it, um, this. My name is Vicri Arevalo, and I don't know why I'm telling this. I'm going to show you my presentation. Give me a minute. <laughs> I don't know why I get so complicated with this. <laughs> Bear with me, please. I'm just going to load the, the presentation for you guys. I'm going to share it with you right now. Okay. Yes, I look different <laughs> than in the picture because I have not brushed my hair. Also, I apologize if you see my hair growing, it's puffy. It's because of the weather. We're in winter and this happens. <laughs> now, um, my name is Vikri Arevalo, as I was mentioning you. I will be your teacher for these four weeks that are missing for module number five, right? So I am a certified teacher for this, so you're in good hands. And then the rest comes from experience, right? So classroom language, right? Somebody was asking for indications. Basically, we have just a couple of things. Classroom language. In case you want to ask a question, go ahead, raise your hand, and you know what to do, right? Just say, Miss, I have a question. If you want to know how to say something in English, this is the question you want to use, number two, right? How do you say the word in Spanish in English, right? And then... If you want me to repeat anything or if you want me to repeat a specific point or to do it again or explain it differently, you want to go for number three, right? So make sure um, if you have doubts or if I didn't explain something in an easy to understand way, let me know so I can do it differently, right? The best way possible for you guys. Now, when it comes to rules, I really don't have many rules in my class. Just I check your effort. The, every day I check. If my students have reviewed what we saw in the previous class, so be on the lookout for that. I will always be checking if you guys review your classes or your lessons, all right? That's important. Otherwise, we forget. Next rule, I would say, I mean, participate. This class is for you guys. Take advantage, participate as much as possible. And as I was telling you at the beginning, this is a safe space for you. So don't be afraid if you make mistakes or if you didn't understand something. This is the moment for you to go ahead and say it, right? So we can help you better. And then if I understand some of you are gonna be traveling because you get off work really late. So if that's the case, just let me know in the group chat and WhatsApp. There is not a problem, but make sure that as soon as you get home, you start, you connect to the class and you can participate, right? Remember it's 80% participation, cameras open at all times. And if you had to eat during the class or drink something, absolutely not a problem, right? Just make sure you have the microphone closed when you're doing it. <laughs> but other than that, don't worry. If you see you eating in the camera, that's not a problem, all right? We're cool with that. So before we move on, I don't want to show you this yet. So um, what were you seeing last week? Do you remember what you talked about last week or what you saw? Who can tell me? What you remember from last week? About the report speech? Reported speech, okay. What else? Uh, we were talking about e-commerce. All right, good. What were you talking about e-commerce? Who uh, remembers? We were talking about uh, about online shopping. Advantages and disadvantages, Harkin. Okay. Now let's recall how many of you have done online shopping? Maybe not today, maybe not this week, but you have done it at least this year, at least once. How many of you have done online shopping? Me, teacher. 
right? I I personally am obsessed with shopping online. <laughs> if I could never leave my house and shop everything online, I would. <laughs> but then sometimes you gotta get out and get the sun. <laughs> so yeah, I'm an avid online shopper. What has been your experience? I want you guys to share what has been your experiences. You can share either your best experience or you can share your worst experience or a funny experience that you have had with online shopping, okay? So for this, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes. Let me check what time is it. Also the list, I don't pass list until 8.30 or nine depending and then at the end of the class, right? Just for you to be aware. So it's 8.20. I'm gonna give you five, no, not five, I think three or three to five minutes. We're gonna check how you're doing, okay? You can write it down and then you can talk to me and tell me about your experience with online shopping. You can tell me if it was a good experience, if it was a bad experience, if you had a funny situation, right? So I'm gonna tell you one just for you to have as an example and then you write yours and then we can share it, okay? I'm gonna tell you mine. Um, last time I was buying perfumes online and I had always used the same card to pay online. And that day I was using the same card. And when I was checking out to make the payment, it was rejecting my card. And I was like, this is impossible. I have money, why is it not accepting it, right? And I kept trying and trying like many times. And suddenly the bank called me like, I would believe somebody, somebody is using your card and it's not allowed to do it. It's probably, this is, a, this is a theft. Has your card been stolen or lost? And I was like, no, it's actually me. I'm the one doing it. And they were like, yeah, you have cried many times. Maybe you wanna wait for a few minutes until you do it again, or, we're, or you're gonna get the card blocked. And I was like, and then I calmed down. <laughs> I calmed down for a few minutes. And when I checked again, you know what I was missing? I was not doing the, I'm not a robot check. I was missing to check that box. So that's why the payment wasn't passing. It was not processing. So it was all my fault and I was almost blocking my part. <laughs> so always pay attention to all the steps, guys. So that was my experience with the online shopping. The last one I had. What about you guys? I want you to tell me if you had a good one, a bad one, a crazy one. So I'm going to give you three to five minutes. It's 822. Let's say I'm going to give you until 827. I'm going to give you five minutes. Write it down the best way you want to express it. And then we we'll start hearing you. One by one, you're going to be telling me your stories. OK? So I'll give you five minutes starting now. OK. <laughs> I don't understand nothing, teacher. Oh my God, I'm going to repeat it. Thank you for telling me, Wendy. Okay, we are going to write down, Wendy, one experience that we have had in the past online shopping. If it was a one good experience or if you had a bad experience or a funny one, any experience that you, had, that you remember that you have had in the past online shopping, you're going to tell it. First, I want you to write it down and then you're gonna share it with the class, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. We have five minutes, Wendy, so run. <laughs> If you have questions, how do you say something or any verb or verb tense or anything, let me know and I'll help you.
We have two more minutes, so start wrapping up. But also, if you need more time, let me know. I don't want to rush you guys. <laughs> Okay, it's 8.27, we can start sharing our stories. If you need more time, don't worry, you can take it. But the ones that have already finished or the ones that are ready to participate, raise your hands and we're gonna start participating. I wanna hear your stories, okay? So let's start raising the hands. Remember, you can find it in the reactions button. En el botón de reacciones, ahí está la manita para levantar. Raise hand, okay? And then we can have a space reserved for participating. I see no hands for participating, so I will assume you need more time. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two more minutes, guys, okay? Oh, we have one volunteer, Ana, please. Ana Raquel, let's hear you. Yes, uh, last month I bought a coupon at Coupon Club. The coupon was for my mom's exams. The experience was very good because they got, gave us the res results very fast by WhatsApp. The only disadvantage is that the place doesn't have much marking, parking, uh, so you have to go with a company. Wow, just the person that's going to take the tests, right? Yeah. Very good job, Anna. <laughs> that was very fluent. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Let's see who else. Volunteers, raise your hand so you can start to participate, please. The ones that are ready, go ahead and raise your hand so you can start participating. Christia, please. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, I don't have experience with the online shopping, but my best friend does. And she told me that the last time she bought some cell phone cases and she tracked the, the case in a radar, or I don't know where. And and for, for some reason they got lost. So the seller contacted her and asked and, and tell her, apologize and told her that they will send a new one. But for other reason, I don't know why finally she received the one that had been lost and the new one. And this is one experience. That's a good experience. <laughs> For me, it's a good experience, I think. <laughs> you know what they yeah. call that? There is an but, idiom. <laughs> but the two cases are the same cases, but she has two. She can sell one. <laughs> yes. You know what they call that in English? There is an idiom, and it's called, so lo voy a poner acá en el chat. It's called a blessing in disguise. It's an idiom. Es un dicho en inglés. A blessing in disguise. It means something that it starts bad, but at the end it turns out that to be something good. So that's an idiom, a blessing in disguise, right? So you can use it in future conversations. <laughs> yeah, okay. very you. good. Let's continue with Manuel Antonio. Okay. Uh, well, in this type of shopping, um, I never have shopped. Okay. That's why I, I have not experienced but I know by, by friends that have experience, for example, 
uh, the the product uh, showed is uh, is different when they receive the, for example, the the, the size of shoes. Mm -hmm. That happens. Uh, well, this is one example. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, I don't. Uh, I. I have. Uh, I didn't like this 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 uh, this experience, mm -hmm. but um, I I suppose that easy uh, to shop in this in this way. Uh, this easy when when you have the enough knowledge about it about it. Oh, good, Manuel. Good opinion. Thank yeah. you. Let's go with Jorge Humberto, please. Hi. Uh, uh, in my experience, I, I like to run. Then I I I like to buy to buy uh, things related to to run, like all for trekking, <laughs> watches, watches, uh, clothes. Uh -huh. um, my my experience was I. I I bought uh, I bought shoes, but uh, when the shoes uh, arriving, they they had a, they have or, or they they had they had uh, -huh. uh many scratches uh, like, like used shoes like a, <laughs> like a cut. Could oh. be uh -huh. scratched it, <laughs> but that was the the experience. Uh, usually, I I use the uh, eBay, mm -hmm. and I, I I don't have a, a problem with that platform. Mm -hmm. All right. And did you return them, or did you get a refund or something? No, just I use the the shoes. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wait. Because it's not that problem to, to run. Ah, okay. Just is, uh, I don't know if you can say cosmetic. Mm -hmm. You're a Pacific person, Jorge. I would have asked for a refund. <laughs> You're a <laughs> Maybe Pacific the, person. <laughs> the scratches, it doesn't yeah. bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You did good then. <laughs> Good. That's a good, the best decision. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. We must go on. Tatiana Mich Michel, please. Yes, teacher. Uh, I bought a gamer kit for my son, and I consider it was a very good experience because the gamer kit was or it, it looked like the advertising, the computer cable cable, the mouse and headset, everything was a uh, LED light and they deliver on time. So the price was good and I think, and my son was very happy. So for me, that was a good experience. And I had a bad experience with a coupon club because I bought <laughs> a uh, coupon club but for my hair and the price that was very good but the service was terrible because they didn't give me they didn't gave me that they offer so that's oh God. that's horrible yeah. <laughs> especially <laughs> when it comes to things that we do like a salon thing we expect to have what we pay for <laughs> yes i know but everything was good, but um, I don't feel happy because mm -hmm. they don't, they, they didn't, didn't comply. Yes. No cumplieron, they didn't comply. Yes. Voy a poner ahí en el chat. Comply, cumplir. Mm -hmm. They didn't comply. All right. Thank you, Tatiana. Let's go with Juan de Dios, please. Okay. Uh, my experience, my first experience was bad. I bought a cell phone that when they when I received it, uh, 
it didn't work. Uh, I put the claim, but they don't respond to me. And I lost my money, uh, around $90. As a result, I never going to buy another thing by online. You know, something like that happened to my to a couple of friends one time. We were <laughs> never booked, you know, um, beach houses, no ranchos, never rent a beach house from Marketplace on Facebook. That's a trap. <laughs> we did that once with my friends and we paid the money and then they never gave us the address of the beach house and they never replied. And then the profiles were to taken down from Facebook. So we just lost our money. So then yes. Don't yes, trust people it, in the marketplace. It, it was with marketplace. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, marketplace in El Salvador is not a good idea, people. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Who else wants to share their their experience? Do we have more volunteers that want to share their experience? Let's see. Do we have more hands? More volunteers? Okay. So this one, this question was specifically for me to measure to see how you guys are doing, right? What areas we might need to reinforce, what areas we can go with. So most of you are very fluent. That's very important because you're in level five intermediate. So for the ones that participate, I'm speaking for the ones that participated. I don't know about the other ones, but the ones that participated, most of you were very fluent and your grammar was on point. Mostly I notice little details that are regarding pronunciation, but that comes with practice. So always remember if you want, if you have doubts, if this next word goes in present or in past, you can always ask, double check just to be sure, right? Other than that, the ones that participate a very good job. You have a pretty good level for being an intermediate. So that's good. I'm working with good material. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you were saying last week, you were talking about reported speech. Tonight, we will talk about it. We will review it. But before we go there, we, before we start with the grammar portion, I want to know, guys, what did you understand that reported speech was? And what did you not understand from the topic? Who wants to share? If you had doubts from last week. I, I remember teacher reporter speech is say things that other person say before. Correct. That could be one version, exactly. That's, but that's actually I, accurate. But when I work in the platform in the 2.1, I, I, I remember the exercise. I, I can do the. The exercise the, was the, giving you trouble. <laughs> <laughs> It yes. happens. All right. We'll check that. We can check that at the end. Don't worry, Jorge. Um, let's see who else. Are, is there any sure. specific point? Tell me. Uh, okay. Uh, at, at the reported reported speech, um, uh, we when we when we tell them. Um, uh, about situations, uh, for example, when I rewrite uh, who something said at the past, uh, we we write, but but uh, the word the, the the reporting verb is changed in the in the in the past. Exactly. Listen, reported speech is very useful when we want to to talk about gossip. <laughs> If you want to know the chambrecito when we want to gossip, reported speech is your best friend, <laughs> right? Um, that's one example. Also, if you're gonna, um, let's see, imagine you're in a situation where you are, you have to go to the police station and you gotta make a declaration. Reported speech is one of the things you could use if you're mentioning what, what the criminal said or what you heard in the situation or anything like that. Those are scenarios where reported speech could come handy to you, all right? Yes, it's true what Jorge and Manuel mentioned, reported speech, it's nothing else than retelling story, right? Also, there are some people that literally work by retelling <laughs> stories on the internet. So that's another option you have. 
So I'm gonna share my the presentation with you guys again. Give me a moment. No, that's not the one. That's the wrong one. You <laughs> got another minute. Here it is. This one. This is the one we're looking for. Okay. So I am going to need some volunteers to read here. Okay. We're going to be talking about this again, reviewing, perfectioning it, right? Please, dear, please, your assistance reading. Okay. The first one, you can answer the question, what did he say in two ways? By repeating the word spoken, a direct speech, by reporting the word sporting, spoken, indirect or reported the speech. Exactly. If someone were to ask you, what did he say or what did she say? You have two versions, two options to answer this question. There are, for you to use indirect, you can also check what direct speech is. We're gonna see it, Manuel. Uh, I'm sorry, teacher. Uh, I didn't <clears throat> understood. Uh, direct, when, when is direct and when is in direct speech. Oh, we're gonna say it in a few minutes, Manuel. We're gonna do some exercises, so yeah. So by repeating the words spoken, that's what we call direct speech. When you literally repeat something, let's say I'm gonna call somebody's name and I'm gonna ask you to say one sentence, okay? Um, let's see, Nelson, Nelson Gavarrete. Do me a favor, please, mm -hmm. and say one sentence. Any sentence that you want, Nelson. Sorry, teacher. Yeah, Nelson, can you give me one sentence? Anything that you want to say, one sentence. I love my mother. I, I am eating anything that you want to say, Nelson. One sentence. <clears throat> uh... Sorry. It doesn't have to be in any specific. Do you just have to say one sentence, Nelson? Anything that you want to say, one sentence. Like I just told you, I love my mother. I am eating anything that you want to say. Just one sentence, Nelson. I am mother. Okay. I love my mother. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. So, and this is just an example. Direct a speech. I'm telling you guys, hey guys, Nelson says, I love my mother. Okay. I'm repeating. Nelson says, I love my mother. And I'm telling you exactly his words. I'm not changing anything. Hey guys, hey class, Nelson says, I love my mother. I'm not changing the subject. I'm not changing the tense. I'm not adding prepositions, anything, right? That's what we call direct speech. When you repeat exactly what the other person say, and you don't change anything, you're literally repeating. <laughs> That's what we call direct speech, right? Okay. Grammatically speaking, it's called direct speech. But in reality, it's just repeating what the other person said. Remember, in this part, you don't change anything. You repeat as you heard. Now, on the indirect Reported speech has two names. It has reported speech and it has indirect speech. So whenever you hear one or the other, it's the same thing. Reported speech is the same as indirect speech, okay? And this one is when you report the words. You don't repeat, you report the words that are being spoken, okay? Before we continue, before we move on, I want to know, is direct speech clear? Yes. Indirect speech teacher is the same when you say reported speech. Yes, it's exactly the same. Um, it has to okay. it, change, it has to name. Change details. For exactly. example, mm -hmm. where the time of the one, one question, teacher. Tell me. In direct speech, the, the verb uh, is is the same. You you don't have change the verb. Exactly, Jorge, you got it. You don't change anything. You, this is as faithful as it can be. As tan la repetición fidedigna, right? That's what we call direct speech. 
And I just want to clarify this one because it's an option that you have. Tell me. The, the last question. I'm sorry, the last question. Mm -hmm. In direct speed, in direct uh, speech, when you say Nelson says, uh, you you can you can say, uh, for example, in this case is uh, in past, in past uh, the verb self, but. May I may I may I write Nelson says? Yeah, you can yes. At this moment. Yeah. As long as you don't change the words that he spoke, what you say before to announce that doesn't matter, right? But the, what you it. yeah, direct it's speech, direct speech is basically you're repeating what the other person says. Of course okay. you have you have to announce it, right? That's why I said, yes. hey class, listen, Nelson said. Okay. I love my mother. I yeah. announced it, but when I repeated what he said, I didn't change anything, right? So that's what we call direct speech, all right? And mm -hmm. just to be clear, the program does not require me to teach you direct speech, but I think it's important that you know your options when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. You have more than one option to speak it, right? So I wanted to yeah. let you know, guys, all right? I need two mm -hmm. volunteers. I need two volunteers, well, three volunteers. One person is going to read this paragraph. Another person is going to read the first two examples. Okay. And the other person did last two. Jorge, help me with the paragraph, please. Cristia, help me with the first two examples, please. And Manuel, help me with the last two examples, please. Okay, teacher. Jorge, please begin. The paragraph. Okay. Uh, the pins are for what? For what? It is. And there is no change in these words. We may be reporting something that they say. Now, for example, a, a telephone conversation or telling someone later about a previous conversation. Thank you. First two examples, Christian. Okay, the first one is, she says, what time will you be home? And the second one, she said, uh, what time will you be home? And I said, I don't know. Thank you. Pay attention before um, before I explain it. Uh, Manuel, please, the last two examples. There's a fly in my shop screaming so Simon. Simon. Mm -hmm. Simon. John said, there's an elephant outside the window. Mm -hmm. First, this part is soup. Soap is jabón, es la sopa, soup. soup. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Pay attention to the examples. We're talking direct. Ahorita el being said, reported, the indirect, no some of this. Ahorita les quiero dar esto. Direct speech, all right? Basically, she says, or she said, lo que preguntaba Manuel. You can announce it in present, you can announce it in past. That part is not relevant. In the direct speech, what is important is that you keep the exact same words that the person says, right? I can announce it in present, I can announce it in past, that doesn't matter. But I gotta keep faithful to what the person said, all right? Do you know who, um, what, who uses this a lot? The people from delivery services. People, when we call, let's say, to Pizza Hut and we order something, and they repeat to you what you have said, right? They, they repeat it exactly as you say it. So that's report, that's direct speech. That's called direct speech right it repeated exactly as you said it and then listen to the other examples that manuel was reading right there's a fly in my soup a scream simone notice in this sentence the announcement is not at the beginning it's at the end so the position when you announce it is not important it's not relevant okay and here we have john said there's an elephant outside the window right where you put the announcement is not relevant because it doesn't affect. What we want to know is exactly what the other person said. And we're gonna do an exercise with that right now. We're gonna practice direct speech, okay? 
what we are going to do. I want everyone to write one sentence. We're going to do exactly what I did with Nelson. Everyone is going to write down one sentence. It can be anything, right? I am hungry. She's my best friend. Anything that you want. In my opinion, don't make it so easy. <laughs> In my opinion, don't make so easy sentences. Don't, don't say something like, I am happy. That's too easy. Try to make it a little bit more complex, right? Everybody, you have two minutes and you have to write one sentence in your notebook, okay? It's 8.51. At 8.53, we will start. Okay. You just have to write one sentence, nothing else. It can be in any tense. Are we clear what we're doing right now? Or are there questions? Te voy a terminar castigando, ¿oíste? No, everything is clear. All right, thank you. So just write down your sentence. One sentence, nothing else, everybody. Any sentence that you want, write it down. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have a question for her? I have one sentence. Oh, okay. Keep it, don't say it right now. We're gonna do an exercise when everybody's finished, okay? Just bear with me, it's just a few more minutes. If you already have your sentence prepared, if you already have it ready, Raise your hand. I will start working with the ones that have ready the sentences. Everybody that already has the sentence ready, raise your hand and I will start working with you. But I need to see the hands so I can know who to call. Okay. We need more hands. I have two hands. We need more, 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 more hands. Ideally, everybody should be participating, right? <laughs> so. Here is what we're going to do. Cristian, do me a favor. You will say your sentence. Jorge, you have to direct report it, right? Direct speech, what she says, okay? You can use, as we're seeing here, you can, she says, you can use she said, or you can use it at the end, right? As you wish. So Cristian, you start, say your sentence. Okay, uh, I want to improve my English. Thank you. We're giving a few seconds to Jorge the process. <laughs> okay, teacher. In, uh, she says, I want to improve my English. Perfect. You got it. Correct, Jorge. Christy, just wait. You will, we will come back to you, Christy, so don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, Jorge, your sentence, please. Claudia My, Melendez, you will you will report direct speech what Jorge says. My sister broke my red pencil. I'm sorry, I don't listen. My sister broke my red pencil. He said. Her, his sister broke his pencil. You have to repeat exactly as Jorge says. Jorge, again. My sister broke my red pencil. Mm -hmm. He say, my sister broke his, my, my sister broke my pencil, my red pencil. Exactly, Claudia, you got it. <laughs> you see, it, this one, it seems easy because we understand that what we have to do. We have to repeat exactly. But when we have to repeat, then it's a little bit difficult because the brain tries to change it, right? <laughs> but I want you to practice this because you have, that's what I was telling you. You have options to speak, right? It's not just one version. Let's continue. Claudia, you're going to say your sentence and Juan de Dios, you are going to use direct speech to repeat it. He says, don't make a phone call. And he says, Claudia, solo su oración. Don't make a phone call. Okay, thank you. She says, don't, mm -hmm. sorry, repeat, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't make a phone call. She says, don't make a phone call. Exactly, correct. <laughs> And this exercise is also going to help you guys with active listening. Active listening, it's not so easy to develop 
when we're learning because we are not exposed constantly. But in this case, you are listening, you are repeating, literally repeating. So it's gonna help your active listening. It's gonna wake up your listening senses. So very good, Claudia, thank you. Juan, you're going to say your sentence to Tatiana, Michelle, please. Uh, Jorge has been working at home during the week. He said, Jorge has been working a lot during the weekend. I forgot. <laughs> oh, that active listening lady again, Juan, please. <laughs> Jorge has been working at home during the week. Okay. He said, Jorge has been working during during the week. A lot during uh, the week. At home during the week. <laughs> what he said. You got Thank it. You. Very good. Now, let me tell you something, guys. There is an interpreter uh, job. Um, I know most of you don't really, are not thinking about changing jobs, but here in El Salvador, we are receiving many new companies that are coming from other countries that they are hiring interpreters. So an interpreter, they listen what the person says in Spanish and translates exactly what the person says in Spanish, translates to English, to doctors, to lawyers, to anything in the States and vice versa, right? So things like this is exactly what they do, interpreters, right? So <laughs> good exercise for you guys. Tatiana, you're gonna set your sentence. Where are the other ones that haven't raised your hand? Levante la mano los que no han participado. Que bárbaro, se van a ir y no han participado. No son bromas, pero en serio, practiquen, aprovechen. Veamos, Tatiana, usted le va a dar su... Oración a Manuel Antonio. Manuel, usted va a usar direct speech para contarnos qué dice Tatiana. Ok. okay. Uh, she swims every morning. Can you repeat the, 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 the sentence, please, Tati? Ok. She swims every morning. Ok. Tatiana said he dreams he swims every morning. He or she, Tatiana? She. Mm -hmm. She. Mm -hmm. She swims. Mm -hmm. Swims every morning. Correct. Very good. That's exactly what it is. Repeating exactly what they say. Tatiana, very good job. Thank you. Manuel, you're going to say your sentence to Miss Maria Elena Guadalupe, please. Okay. Okay. Today, I visited my sister in La Libertad. She said today he visited uh, my sister in La Libertad. Mm -mm. We don't change anything. Repeat it, uh, Manuel, please. In fact, Maria, you have to repeat it exactly what, the way he says. Today I visited my sister in La Libertad. Ah, she said today I visited my sister in La Libertad. Yes, correct, Maria. You got it. That's exactly what it is. Maria, you're going to say your sentence. To the next person that raises the hand. ¿Quién es el siguiente que no ha levantado la mano? Veamos. Faltan varios. Los tengo en la mano, muchachos. Raise your hand. Or I'm going to start calling names. <laughs> no, let's see. Um, veamos. Vamos a preguntar si está por ahí. Mario Villeda. ¿Está por ahí, Mario? ¿Está disponible? Are you there? Mario, are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. Thank you. Maria, you are going to say your sentence to Mario. Maria, you will use direct speech to say what Maria says. I am really love chocolate. I am, Maria. I really love. Yeah, I'm really love. Sorry, sorry. Tell me, tell me again, please. Maria, please. I really love chocolate. Uh, she loves chocolate. She says she say she loves chocolate. Mm. Va a repetir exactamente como Maria le diga, Maria. Maria, de nuevo, please. I really love chocolate. She say she re really loves chocolate. 
Ahí le está cambiando el sujeto. Ya no me dice I, está diciendo she. Y lo va a repetir tal como María lo dice. Si ella dice I, usted dice I. Tal cual. María, one more time. I really love chocolate. María dice... I really like chocolate. Yes, Mario, correct. Thank you, Maria. Exactly, Maria. The point with direct speech is that you repeat exactly the words that the other person says. We don't change anything. Opposite to reported speech that we're going to talk about that in a minute, but I'm going to give you the easy one first. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Thank you. Let's see. Well, we're going to continue here because I don't see any more hands. Shame on you guys. All right. Before we continue, we're going to go with the list. Now it's time for the first time to go with the list. So today is Monday the 12th and we have Ana Raquel Villalta. Ana Raquel Villalta. Yes. Thank you. Present. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Thank you, Ana. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Diana Elizabeth. Jorge Humberto Vela. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jonathan Vigil. Jose Jonathan Vigil. Jose Rodrigo Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Rivas Jovel. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan de Dios Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Yvette Márquez. Linda Yvette Márquez. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Thank you. María Concepción Cerón. Present. Thank you. María Elena. Present. Thank you. Me quedé a medias. No dije todo el nombre de María, pero ya sabe quién es. <ríe> eh, María Ernesto Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelson Gabarrete Merino. I'm here. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Norma Carolina Villeda. Olga Marleni Gómez. Present teacher. Thank you. Tatiana Michelle Sanchez. Tatiana Michelle Sanchez. Y Wendy Maribel Zabaleta. Present teacher. Thank you. Y Cristian Natalie Erazo. Present teacher. Thank you. All right, we can continue with the class. Give me a testimony. No me mencionó, teacher, Silvia Suleima. Silvia Suleima. Como no sé si la mencioné. Y si, yo creo que la escuché a usted. Ah, okay. Ajá, porque sí me aparece presente. <ríe> Así que sí, niña. Fue Diosito, <ríe> pero sí la mencioné. <ríe> All right, we're going to continue. Ok. So, I will assume that everybody understood direct speech because most of you participated. So, we go with, the, with our best friend in direct speech. No. <ríe> All right. I need two volunteers, please. One to read the paragraph and another person to read the example and the last part. Cristia, please help me with the paragraph and Claudia, help me with the example and the last part. Okay, indirect speech. A report or indirect speech is usually used to talk about the past. So we normally change the tense of the word spoken. We use reporting verbs like say, tell, ask, and we may use the words that to introduce the reported words, inverted commas, are not used. Thank you. She say, I saw him, direct speech. She said that she had seen, seen him, indirect speech. That may be omitted. She told him that she was happy. She told him she was happy. Thank you, very good, okay. Just the parenthesis, direct speech, the one we just spoke about a few moments ago, that one, I taught it to you, because I, I want you to have options when you speak, 
but you will not see exercises in the platform with direct speech. Okay, esto no lo van a ver. Direct speech no le va a aparecer en la plataforma. Al menos no ahorita. Solo van a ver ejercicios con indirect or reported speech, right? So, as Christia was reading, right? Opposite to direct speech. Direct speech, absolutely easy. We just repeat. Indirect speech, on the other hand, comes with twisting things, right? So, for reported speech, you know, vamos a dirigir a este como reported speech, right? It's usually talked about in the past, not always. But it's used, it's used usually the way we use it, right? But for this one, we're gonna change the tense of the words. Okay. The most common verbs that we will use to announce will be lamb, say, tell, ask. All right. And we may use the preposition in this case, that, right? We can use the word that to introduce the next thing that we're gonna report. But as Claudia was reading, it can also be omitted, right? It can also be omitted. I can report the speech. Si vamos a cambiar el tiempo. We will change the grammar tense for the reporting portion, okay? And we will see a little bit more about that in a minute. Now, notice what Claudia read. The expression that may be omitted. However, when you are writing, in written English, in written English, it's better to include it. When you're using reported speech and you're writing it, it's better to include the preposition. We usually omit it when we're speaking. At the moment of speaking, you will barely ever hear someone use the preposition that, okay? You can use it, but it's usually when talking, we omit it, right? Now, Say and tell. We need two more volunteers, please. One to read this portion and the other one to read this. I need help with the reading, please. Um, Juan de Dios, help me with the say and tell portion. And I need another person to read talk and say, please. Talk and speak. One more volunteer, please, for reading. Manuel, you will read talk and speak, please. One. Say and tell. You say when there is no indirect object, he say that he was tired. Always use tell when you say who was being spoken to, i.e. with an indirect object. He told me that he was tired. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we read, Manuel, give me just a moment, okay? Say and tell Juan. Juan was reading. We're going to use the expression he says, she says, or even if it's in past, it doesn't matter. But we're going to use it when there is no indirect object. Nobody receiving the expression, okay? He said that he was tired. He said, pero no dice a quien se lo dijo. It doesn't mention to whom. So in that case, you will use the verb say to report it, okay? However, however, if the action or the expression or the sentence was said to another person, to a different subject, we call it indirect object. In that case, we will use the expression, the verb tell, okay? Tell to, that's the normal one. In this case, we say tell and the person, okay? He told me, he told me, that he was tired. This word, me, this subject, is the okay. indirect object in the sentence. Okay. Okay. So, sin, and do you want me to say it in Spanish or is it clear in English? Let me know. Could you no please repeat, teacher? Yes. All right. Here we go. Say and tell. How do you know when to use which one? You will just say to report or to announce that what is being reported when it's not said to anyone in a specific. Okay. Um, Juan said, Juan said that he loved his mother. But we don't say Juan said to another person. If there is no to or another person that receives this, we use say. 
But if this the if the expression is given to someone else, we say tell. Ocupamos tell para anunciar el report. Lo que vamos a reportar, right? He told me that he was tired. I cannot say he say me. Mm -mm. He mm -hmm. said his father no. If there is a second person that receives the message, we use okay. tell. Okay. okay. That's basically what we want to say. He said, and then the opposite goes, the opposite applies. If you have an expression that doesn't have a subject, an object, you will not use tell. You cannot say he told, he told that he was tired. Mm -mm. He told, he told his father he was tired. He told you he was tired, right? If there is an indirect object after the verb, you use still. If there is no one, you use say. Okay. Let's go with let's go with Manuel, please. Talk. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. When the word say and tell mm -hmm. these rules uh, that you can that you can give, uh, maybe use it in in general, yeah. in other sentences. Yeah. In, actually, okay. this can be used in any ten, in other tense, yes. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, talk and speak. Use these verbs to describe the action of communicating. He talked to us. She was speaking on the telephone. Use these verbs with about to refer to what was said. He talked to us about his party. Right. Thank you, Manuel. So when we're describing the action of communicating, we can use talk or speak. Okay. Um, I can say my friend was talking on the phone, right? She was speaking on the telephone. All right. He talked to us. They talk to their friends, right? Talk and speak, you can use them to express that somebody else was saying or telling something. If you don't want to use say or tell, you can use talk or speak to talk about the action, okay? The action of communicating. And then it says, use these verbs with about to refer to what was said. When you want to say, I mean, if I say, for example, my mother talked to us um, about what, right? So that's when I mentioned this word, about, to say the topic that was being mentioned in the communication. My mother talked to us about getting a job, <laughs> right? My mother talked to us about getting a job. She was speaking with her friends. Mm, but that doesn't tell me anything, right? What was she talking about? Ah, uh, she was uh, speaking with her friends about doing exercise together, right? So when you want to mention what is it the topic in the communication, you can use about, talk about or speak about, right? Hablar sobre, it can be talk to or talk about or speaking about or speak about. It will always vary, but that's the main function. Okay, now this one. These are just like free rules before you start reporting, okay? Just for you to keep in, keep that in mind. These are free rules for you to start reporting. Now, another rule we need, we're going to change the verb. We're going to change the tense of the verb in the reported speech. Are we going to do this always, forever and ever? No be very careful it says if needed okay you will change the tense of the verb in the reported speech only if it's necessary only if it's needed all right i need a volunteer to one for this portion and one for these examples jorge please help me with the examples because it's four examples so you're going to help me with that tatiana help me with the paragraph please Okay, number three, change the tense of the verb in the reporter's speech if need, needed. If the reporting, reporting verb is in the past tense, you should change, change the tense of the verb inside the reporter, reporter's speech into its past tense. 
This is not necessary if the reporting verb is in the present or the future tense. All right, this all sounds like mathematics to me. <laughs> Let's see the examples so we can understand what it is. Examples, direct speech. He said, I am watching a new TV series. Indirect speech, he said that he was watching a new TV series. Direct speech, he says, I am watching a new TV series. Indirect speech, he says, that he is watching a new TV series. Thank you, Jorge. Okay, pay attention to make this easier. To make this easier, pay attention to the words that are underlined. Presten atención a lo que está subrayado, to what is underlined, okay? The rule is telling me, if the reporting verb, not the verb in the, in the sentence, not the verb of the, what the person talk about, no. The reporting verb is the one we use to announce, to start reporting, okay? If the reporting verb is in past, originally, we change it to the past tense, okay? This is not always necessary. And specifically, if you see in present or in future, it won't change. So pay attention. He said, I am watching a new TV series, okay? Let's imagine that Manuel tells me, teacher, Jorge said, I am watching a new TV series. Teacher, Jorge said, I am watching a new TV series. Oh, okay, I have reported to Tatiana. Tatiana, Manuel told me that Jorge had said he was watching a new TV series, okay? That's what's gonna, this part will change if this one is in past. If this verb is in past, then next, when I report it, I will change it to the past of it. Same thing. Another example. He says, I am watching a new TV series. In direct speech, y aquí no cambio, miren. He says that he is watching a new TV series. Present progressive, present progressive. And the rule tells you it's not necessary to change it if it's in future present but also in person progressive, okay? So it's not mandatory. No quiero que se, que se claven, que se queden con la idea de que it always has to happen. No, <laughs> you will change it to past if it's necessary, if it's needed, right? Not in all the cases that will be necessary, okay? Of course, guys, you have to consider the correlation. This is like mathematics again, don't worry. We will get to the practice part. <laughs> You have to consider the correlation between report and the idea of the quoted text, okay? Sometimes a change in tense is not needed, even if reporting verb is in the past tense. This is what I was telling you. Sometimes you don't need to change the past. If the reporting verb was in present, you don't change it. If it was in past, you don't change it. Sometimes you just go with the flow as you feel it, right? And we have examples. I need another volunteer to read examples, please and then another person to read the explanation of those examples. Let's see. Volunteer Siri. Hey teacher. Okay. Uh, Manuel, help me with the, with the examples please. And I need someone else to help me read the explanation. Okay. Let's see, give me one moment. Uh, Cristia, please. Manuel, you will read the first two. Maria Elena, you will read the last two examples, please. Okay. Cristia, the explanation. Go ahead. Uh, of course, you have to consider the correlation between the report and the idea on the quote text. Sometimes a change in tense is not needed, even if the reporting verb is in the past tense. Example, direct speech. He said, I will be watching a new TV series. In direct speech, he said, that he will be watching a new TV series. Thank you, Maria Elena. Direct speech, he said, I watch TV series uh, every night. Indirect speech, he said that he watched TV series every night. Thank you. Christian, please. For the first example, the quote text is still about to happen. 
So you don't need to change the tense of sentence inside the equations. For the second example, watching TV series is implied as habitual action. Therefore, you still have to retain the present tense of the verb. Okay, this part up here, this is telling you it's don't change it if it's not necessary. Okay, some and this part is telling you on the first example. Okay, this is in future. I will be watching a new TV series. It's like I was telling you, tomorrow I will travel to Europe. That action has not happened, right? So you don't have to change it to past when you are saying the reported speech. If the original sentence is in future, you don't change it to past when you report it. You keep it in future. Um, teacher Bikri said that she will be traveling to Europe tomorrow, right? You didn't change anything in that case. Now, yes, the chair, mm -hmm. only only we we add the the word that exactly yeah basically mm -hmm. okay. and we're not but we're not changing the tense if it's in future okay. we don't change it and then okay. in the second example he said I watch TV series every night when I reported in reported speech. I say it in present. Here is in present, I say it in present. Because this expression every night implies that it's a habitual thing, something that happens frequently. So there is no need for me to change it to past because it keeps on happening, right? That's, those are like the two exceptions that you for sure know if it's in future and in present, you don't change it to past. As simple as that, right? Now, Pronouns. Do I need to change pronouns when I do reported speech? It will depend. Again, nothing is written on stone. It will depend. All right. From the people that have not participated, I need two volunteers to read number four, please. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to ask Silvia Suleyma, please read. Silvia, are you there? If not, I'm going to ask Maria, please help me with number four. You can read it all, Maria. All yours. <laughs> um, number four. Change the pronouns accordingly. You should also change the pronouns based on who the speaker, doer, and receiver of the action is example direct speech when they say wrong you should take care of yourself indirect speech when they talk wrong that he should take care of himself continue my <laughs> uh, continue yes please Appropriate uh, changing of pronouns is done uh, is done to avoid misunderstanding. Understanding uh -huh. the whole text is, if pronouns are not changed, it might uh, confuse the reader of the listener as to who is saying or doing to the the action doing the action thank you maria very good all right guys so this is the last rule before we start with the practice so don't worry <laughs> okay change the pronouns accordingly when you are doing reported speech you should change the pronoun based on who the speaker doer and receiver of the action is okay we have this example when this says when is the person saying, she's not doing it, she's saying it. When it says, run, you should take care of yourself. Y aquí viene Vicri, and I'm going to report, okay? Um, Fulanito, Wendy told Ron that he should take care of himself, okay? Just make sure that the pronouns are changed accordingly, right? Because if I don't change them accordingly, I can confuse the other person. 
Imagine that it says, when this says, run, you should take care of yourself. And then when I report it, I can say, when this says, run, take care of yourself. If I don't change it or if I didn't use the correct pronouns, I could get the other person confused. So just make sure to use them accordingly. Okay. Now we're going to do a practice. Okay. I'm going to share a link with you guys. Give me one minute. And this one is basically done online. Let me know when you're seeing the screen, please. I see the yes, screen. Okay. Thank you. okay, so we're gonna practice here. You're gonna, we have 10 exercises. So we're gonna need 10 volunteers. So raise your hand so I can give it to you, all right? All you have to do is read the sentence Continue the reporting, and when you are reporting, select the correct form of the verb reporting. Okay, you will select the correct one. For this one, I am gonna give. I'm gonna be giving you guys the remote. Yo le voy a dar el control a ustedes cuando sea su turno. Así que necesito que levanten la mano todos. Everybody, raise your hand. Well, the ones that will participate. We need ten volunteers. Ten, All right? When we have ten, we will start. Mm -hmm. I have six. I need four more volunteers. Four more hands, please. So we can start with this exercise. We have seven, eight. We have we need two more persons, two more people for this. We have eight. We need two more volunteers. Two more hands, please. I will start giving the, the exercises, don't worry guys. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Okay, we have eight, we're gonna start assigning. And there will be a chance for two of you to repeat. Tatiana, you will do number one. And Cristia, you will do number two. Manuel Antonio, number three. Silvia Suleima, number four. Maria Elena, number five. Juan de Dios, number six. Claudia Melendez, number seven. Jorge Humberto, number eight. Okay, I'm gonna give you the control, Tatiana, in this moment, so you can answer number one, okay? You can, if you're on your, or, yeah, your number one. Tatiana. But you have to read it out loud, Tatiana. <laughs> okay, sorry, uh, I work in a bank. He said that he work. He uh, this for this exercise. I'm not going to help you guys. You have to trust your instincts. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He had he had work in a bank. You choose that. Then. I cannot help you here. <laughs> Is that your final decision, Tatiana? <laughs> no, I... Say it the way that you would say it. Select the way that you would say it. No, that is it. I think that the, the right answer, I think. Okay. I cannot give you the answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> but okay. because I want you guys to find out at the end, that's like surprise factor. <laughs> Christia, please. Oh, I will give you the control, Christia. Give me one moment. Yes, yeah, please. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Christia. Okay, you have the control, Christia. Okay. You have to read it. I am working today. She told us she that you have to move the the, the mouse or the if you have a touch screen and select this. Okay. Yes. Mm. No, that's okay. Tatiana's. <laughs> you are no. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I am in my cell phone and, okay. and that's no no complicated. Worries. Oh. There okay. you are. <laughs> it's almost. Almost there, almost there. Yay. <laughs> I, yes. Um, 
I don't remember. I am working today. She told us she she okay. I'm working today. She told us she is working that day. She was working that day. Esa palabra al final, that day, it has to give you a clue. That day gives you an expression. That day is not today. Yes. He was working that day. You can do it, Christian. I can't tell you anything. I can only try to give you clues, but I cannot tell you the answer yet. You will see later. I have, <laughs> have worn in my brain. <laughs> I think I think oh, that is the answer. All right, but, we're gonna go with that one. What happened? Okay. You can use 50 50. Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> Give me a moment. I will share with you. 50 50, yes. The opinion of pulling. Yes, yes, yes. Use the call. All right. Yes. Number three, Manuel, right? Okay. Manuel, number three. You have the control, Manuel. You can okay. use the mouse. With the with the pencil. Mm -hmm. You can use, you can move it with a click also. Um but Christy, how were you moving mm -hmm. it? With your finger? No. Well, you start mouse or so? With my with my finger. I move. Well, you can use your finger to move the mouse here. Uh, I I am I have my cell phone teacher. Oh, I can do it for you. Tell me which option you will select. Thank Read the sentence. Thank you. Okay, I've been ill. What is that? Ill, okay. For ill a couple of weeks. <laughs> he told me uh, he had had been ill for a couple of weeks. Yes. All right, you're gonna go with that one. All right, <laughs> all right. Number four was Juan de Dios, right? Not sure, you told me uh, okay, I'm number sorry. six. Who has number four? Silvia, Silvia, You have the control, Silvia. Okay. I was at the doctor all morning. Mm -hmm. She told me that she that she a little bit move it move it a little bit. <laughs> No. Again, Miss Alec. It was right there. <laughs> there. Miss Alec. No. There oh. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. She told me that she she was at the doctor all morning. Yeah, um, she told me that she, 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 she had been okay, the doctor all morning. All right, so let's oh. <laughs> okay. There, it's that perfect. Who is number five? Me. Maria, right? Maria Elena. Yes. Okay, Maria, you have the remote. You have the control, Maria. Okay. Okay, I can do it for you. You can just give me the answer that you think. Let's read it, Maria. I lamp mm -hmm. during morning. Mm -hmm. He told me he 
was learning. Think again, Maria. Think again. This one is I will. Aquí está abreviado, pero es I will lend you the money. I will lend you the money. Mm -hmm. That's in the original sentence. In the reported sentence, will lend. That is the past tense of will. Number six. Who has number six? Juan, right? Juan. Me, teacher. Yes. All right. Out of it. <laughs> you have the control. Mm -hmm. You have to read it, Juan. <laughs> so, I can't do it without your help. She saved me. No, she said. She, she said she uh, didn't do it without me. Pero ahí está cambiando todo el significado. She, she can do it. What is the past of Ken? Couldn't. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> she <laughs> said she couldn't do it without my help. All right. We will see how it goes. One. <laughs> Number uh, seven. It was Jorge, right? Oh, teacher, number yeah. eight. Uh, number eight. Wow. Me. Ah, who's me? I'm sorry. Claudia, Claudia thank you. I'm sorry, se me pierde aquí la pantallita. <laughs> Claudia, I'm mm. going to give you the control. Give me one moment. Here. Okay. Ready. The meeting may start early. He told us that meeting. Uh, Do you want me to, to show you? Uh, I, uh, okay. So as that meeting my uh okay. thank you. Number eight. Uh Jorge, I will give you the control one moment. Okay, Jorge. Did you have to read the sentence? <laughs> I must leave early today he said that he he must uh, he must leave early but you're not but you're not reporting in that case if you select that one you're not reporting yeah. you're repeating <laughs> i must i must leave early today he said that he had to leave early that day Yes. Thank you. All right. We have two more sentences, number nine and number 10. For the people that have not participated, do we have volunteers that you want to participate? Do we have a volunteer? Two extra volunteers? You can raise your hand, levante la manita, so we can give you the ones that have not participated. We have two more. Tenemos dos más acá. Oy, ya está moviendo bien. <laughs> Okay, we have two more volunteers. No one wants to participate. <laughs> Do you want to repeat yourself, Maria Elena, please? I will give you another one. You will have number one. Number nine. Is there another person? Manuel. Okay, you will have number 10. Maria Elena, I will I will read it to you. Number nine. Okay, read it, please. Sorry. I will show it. You should talk to him. She said that. Walter. Why? Why are you choosing wood? <laughs> to show that to him. She said. Show that to him. All right. And number 10, Manuel? Get out. She told me. I, 
I go doubt. Mm. You are get out. You are already she mentioning did. the word me, so you shouldn't be use the I again after me. To get out. Mm -hmm. I cannot say me y luego decir I no se puede. So desde ahí yo sé que por descarte. <laughs> This will have to Now, I'm going to show you guys the answer and we're going to check them, okay? And you can see, all right? So, number one, okay? It says, I work in a bank. Acá, Tatiana lo cambió a past perfect and present perfect, all right? Y en este caso, si se acuerdan, podía pasarlo a pasado simple o podía dejarlo exactamente igual, según la regla, right? So, That's what that's the only thing, right? Pero los nervios, ella fue la primera, así que <laughs> no le dimos mucho chance. And then the other ones, you check. I am working today. Remember the rule. If it's in progressive, it stays in progressive, right? The present progressive, so lo cambié a past progressive porque la expresión that day. Si aquí dijera today, igual que acá, exactamente, yo no le cambio nada. Solo diría she told us. She is working today. Okay. Pero como decía that day, lo cambiaron de la forma correcta. All right. Very good. Y aquí les dice, caballo, que les, esta palabra les daba la pista. Number three. I have been ill for a couple of weeks. Y seleccionaron, he told me he had been ill. Hicieron correcto. Present perfect. Lo paso a past perfect and reported. Okay. Number four. El pasado de will be. I'm sorry, <laughs> this one was incorrect. Number four says, I was at the doctor all morning. Yo hubiera seleccionado had been. Y esa es la correcta, had been. Okay. She told me that she had been at the doctor all morning. Okay. Past simple. El pasado de past simple sería past perfect. Okay. Number five. I will lend you the money. El pasado de will. Que también es un... Uh, auxiliar, en este caso es would, okay, will would, you did correct number six I can't do it without you the past tense of can't couldn't, so you change it correctly, right, number seven the meeting may start early this one it's in present so I don't change it remember the rule, in present I don't change it Can I change it? Yes, I can, but it's not necessary, right? So, lo único que hice es cambiar el may por might. Es el mismo tiempo gramatical. Uh, They no, are both yeah. in present. Mm -hmm. Solo <laughs> diferente palabra, right? But it means yes. the same. Number eight. I must leave early today. Must represents obligation. Have to also represents an obligation. Same case, right? Number nine, we said... You should talk to Jim. She said that I should talk to him. Again, these ones, you use exactly the same ones, right? You didn't change them. And this one, get out. She told me to get out. Because we have this one here, we know that it has to be followed by infinitive. So this is just re to remind, right? To remind yourself about this. Now we're gonna go to the manual, to the student's manual, okay? We're gonna do some exercises. Let me load the screen for you. In case. All right, so here we have it. And in here, in the table, you will see, right? How do you report your speech? They are speaking specifically about imperatives, all right? Um, I need two people to help me read one with this box and then another person to read this box. We need two volunteers. Maria, please help me with this box, the first one. We have another volunteer to read. How to use report and speech imperatives. Look at the examples in the box, the complete exercise below. Mm -hmm. uh, sentences expressing a common request, advice of suggestion is called an imperative sentence. You should learn from, from your competitor, but never copy, check math. 
that Ma recommends to learn from our competitor, but do never copy. Thank you, Maria. Okay, um, we need one more person to read the last box, please. Christia, please. Some specific verbs are required to change an imperative sentence into reported speech. Uh, I don't know what mean e.g. Example. <laughs> Example. Okay, requested, ordered, advised, suggested, instead of the reported verbs, said and told. And uh, never give up. Entrepreneurs recommend to never give up. The most important thing is in e-commerce, Jack Ma says, is act with passion. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma suggests, is to act with passion. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we mention imperatives, imperatives is literally to give an order. Imperative. It means that you're giving an order. Nothing else. No science. Right. When you hear the word imperatives, it means orders, all right? Basically. So now, based on that, we're gonna do exercise number seven. You're going to read the quotes, the expressions, by entrepreneurs doing business. You're going to rewrite them using the speech, okay? So we have six sentences. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let you go to the, um, what do we call it? I forget the name. Breakout rooms, <laughs> I remember now. We're gonna go to the breakout rooms and you're gonna work in groups, okay? So one group is gonna do number one and two, another one is gonna do three and four, another one, five and six, all right? You're gonna rewriting. This is the original sentence and then you're going to write it in reported speech in the group, okay? So let me open the rooms. We're gonna have four, okay? We're gonna have four groups, five groups. Okay, here we are. You're gonna be three people for each group. In each group, you're gonna have three people. And number one, it's gonna be, how many do I have? Yeah, number one for room number one, Ana Raquel, Nelson, and Silvia. Number two, Juan Carlos Rivas, Juan de Dios, and Tatiana Michelle. Number three, Claudia Melendez, Maria Concepcion, Maria Elena Guadalupe. O sea, les toca la número tres. Room number four, Cristia Erazo, Jorge Humberto y Manuel Antonio. Ustedes tienen la número cuatro. Room number five, ustedes tienen la oración cinco. Y seis, las dos últimas. Room number five, tienen las últimas dos, cinco y seis. Okay. Remember, you have to work in groups and change the sentence that is there originally. You have to change it to reported speech. Did I not mention someone? No. I can't mention it. Amy. Wendy. Wendy, si la mencioné en el room 5. Carlos, no, no la mencioné, pero ahí está Wendy. Wendy, no. Maribel, Mario Villeda y Carlos Antonio. Ustedes están en el room 5. Ustedes van a estar las 5 y las 6. Number 5 and 6. Ok. The rooms are open. You will have, you will have five minutes because it's only one sentence. Room number 5 has two sentences, but it's my people. So you have five minutes. All right. At 8.55, at 9.55, we start and we check. The rooms are open right now, so you can start. You can go to the breakout rooms. You can join the breakout rooms right now. Means I can join in my little room. Why not? I don't know. I miss the, the pop-up. Where are you? Okay, I'm going to move you to room five, but don't accept it. And then I'm going to go move you back to room four, okay? okay. I, will let, I will let you know. Give me one minute, Christy. Okay, now you can. Oh, accept. thank you. Uh -huh. Yes. Teacher, I have a trouble. What uh, trouble? Exit. Um, break at room three. Uh, Maria. Yes. Okay, I will move you, but don't accept it right now. I will tell you when, Maria. 
Okay. In what room were you, Maria? Three. Okay, one moment. Ahora, sí, ya puede aceptar la mañana. Pero María Elena, María Elena, ¿verdad? Pues no moví a la otra niña, María, perdón. <risa> a María Ivette. Ajá, María Elena, permítame, ahorita. Room number three, ¿verdad? Ahora, María Elena. Yes. Elena. Ahora sí ya puede ingresar. María Concepción, are you going to join? María Concepción, are you there? Carlos, do you have a group where you assign? Yes, no. Carlos, what happened? You were in room five. Hi, pasaba a chequear if you need help. Yes, sorry, I, I can hear the, 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 the pitch. Yes. Okay. You are room number. Hi. Uh, I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> page, page 16. Yeah, se los mandé en el chat, the WhatsApp. You guys have to do, you, because you're group number five, you have to change the sentence number five and number six. Sentence number so five, uh -huh. focus on the customer, not the product. Tony C. Tony C. So you have to report it. You have to use reported speech, change that sentence to reported speech. Como lo cambiarían? How would you do it? So, Tony H say focus on the customer, not the product. Say or said? Say. Huh? No, say. 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 Como tiene el verbo said, y después tiene otro verbo directamente, focus, que va en medio. Yo al menos no entiendo, yo no he entendido nada del tema. Ok. Set two points. Uh, Esta es regla general y se lo voy a decir en español. Say that. Tú, la preposición tú. Siempre que usted, esta regla universal, siempre que haya dos verbos seguidos, el primero puede cambiar, pero el segundo siempre va a ir con la preposición tú. En este caso, set to focus on customer. Ok. Mm -hmm. Ok, ok. Uh -huh. Este es como guía para ustedes, este es universal. Siempre que vean dos verbos a la par, va a haber la preposición tú en medio. ¿Ok? Ok, ok. Um, Wendy, ya que estamos acá, voy a aprovechar hablar en español porque solo es con ustedes dos. Um, ¿Qué es lo que necesita que le reforcemos, Wendy? Oh, ¿Qué es lo que dice que no entendió? Porque vimos... Es que no he entendido vale. nada del tema. Pero esto ya lo habían visto, Wendy, lo vieron la semana pasada. Ahora estamos terminando de pulir, pero sí quisiera saber... ¿Qué exactamente no, no entendí? Sé, no sé cómo se me ha, me ha costado. Quizás o hemos visto cosas diferentes o el enfoque o no sé, pero no lo, no lo entendí. Ajá. El tema es el mismo y la, la, la gramática fue la misma. Mario, ¿usted cómo, cómo se siente con ese tema? Es que desde la vez pasada no, no lo entendía mucho. Ah, ok. okay. ¿Mario? Con, con la gramática, sí, de como 
tengo que acostumbrarme a, a decirlo repetitivamente, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. O sea, voy a practicarlo continuamente porque sí, le, le entiendo la lógica, uh -huh. pero no se me queda. Ok. All right. Um, I know you guys are used to it on, on the English. Sé que por el nivel que están, están acostumbrados a full inglés. Pero Wendy, voy a hacer la excepción y lo voy a decir rapidito ahorita aprovechando. Reported speech lo ocupamos para contar lo que otra persona dijo, Wendy. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, Mario me dice, yo necesito practicar. Y yo le voy a contar a usted lo que Mario dijo. Yo ocupo reported speech. A eso se le llama reported speech. Wendy, Mario dijo que él necesita practicar. ¿Ok? Yo estoy reportándole lo que Mario dijo. Por lo general, Wendy, cuando la, si Mario me hubiera dicho, yo necesitaba practicar ayer, yo le hubiera dicho a usted en pasado. Mario dijo que él había necesitado practicar ayer. Pero como lo dijo en presente, yo se lo cuento a usted en presente. Mario dice que él necesita practicar. Eso es el reported speech. Okay. ¿Ok? Lo vamos a reforzar también en nuestra sesión uno a uno. Así que no se preocupe. Que lo vamos. Cuando tengamos la sesión uno a uno, yo le ayudo. ¿Ok? Ok. Perfect. I will give you in a moment. We're just giving a few more seconds for the other ones to return to the session. And everybody should be back. Yes. Okay, room number one. Let's hear your sentence. Room number one, Ana Raquel, Nelson, or Silvia. Yes. Um, teacher, um, Mark Zuckerberg said that only five people who he will work for Mm, ok. A esa oración solo le van a agregar el tú. Mark Zuckerberg said to only hire people mm -hmm. who you would work for. Ok. Other than that, very good job. Room number two, please. Sentence number two. Uh, Larry Pace suggested to concentrate on the long term. Very good. Okay. Also remember, and this is a universal rule. I was talking to someone else in a different room. Whenever you have two, and this is universal rule. When you, whenever you see two verbs together, one after the other, most likely 99% of the times, you will need the preposition two in the middle. Okay. If you see two verbs, okay. one after the other, two in the middle to make the last one infinitive. Okay. Very good job. Number three, please. Aaron Levy requires to make user experience your competitive advantage. Very good. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Number four, please. Um, Drew Houston recommend to learn a lot really fast from doing things wrong. Very good. <laughs> nice. Thank you. And last but not least, Mario, please, with number five. Tom's I say to focus on the customer, not the product. Perfect. Very good, everyone. So that's going to be it for tonight. Don't worry, at the beginning of the class tomorrow, we will review this briefly. We're not going to use the whole hour, but we will review this briefly just to see if you remember. 
and then we will continue with the with the next with the rest of the class all right um how do you feel with this topic guys i want to hear your opinions <laughs> i want to hear your how you feel i'm kind of confused it <laughs> all right that's good to know because uh, if you don't say there's no way for me to guess <laughs> i do not read minds but okay so my suggestion try to review this tomorrow when you have time guys and when we return tomorrow night let me know teacher can we repeat uh, repeat this or can we review this point or this rule and we can check it again all right and i will look for other exercises to see that you can practice it a little bit more tomorrow okay Okay. I will check the list right now and we're going to okay. go. Hey, All right, we're going to go Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Jorge Humberto Vela. Present teacher. Antes de continuar, thank you. Antes de continuar, ¿quién fue el último que tuvo su one on one el viernes? Me teacher. That is Jorge. Juan de Dios. Juan de Dios. Jorge número nueve, venga. Ok. <ríe> eh, de los que acabo de mencionar, del, del, uno al, del uno al seis, ya todos tuvieron su one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Muy interesante. Ok. Number seven, uh, José Rodrigo Hernández. Juan Carlos Rivas Joven. Juan de Dios Mejía Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Present Entonces, teacher. Uh, thank you. Entonces ahora le tocaría a Linda Ibet. Pero no ha venido. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel, entonces usted se tiene que quedar 10 minutos para su asesoría, Manuel. Ok. Ok. María Concepción Cerón. Present. Thank you. Maria Elena Guadalupe. Present. Thank you. Maria, Mario, Mario Ernesto Villeda. Sorry. Present. Thank you. Nelson Gavarrete. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Norma Carolina. Um, Olga Marleni. Silvia Suleima. Present teacher. Thank you. Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel. Present teacher. Thank you. Christian Natalie. Teacher. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow so we can continue practicing, okay? Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night. Blessings. All right, so how are you, Manuel? I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, surprised because, because uh, the, the previous teacher uh, didn't, didn't say that she that was we, leaving. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> but, but uh, you're welcome, all class Thank teacher. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same, I... Uh, the, it's okay when we we change a teacher. The, right. the teacher Nati is a fantastic teacher also. Yeah. And and this is good because when I I was uh, studying in the in the I don't know what the uh, what is the the correct uh, word in the presential. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. in person, okay. yeah, when I was studying in person. Uh -huh. Yeah, in person, uh, I had a three, uh, the same teacher for three months. Uh, what do you say, seguido? Mm -hmm. One after the other. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, or continuously. I, continuously, thank you. Uh, I was... Uh, I was uh, I was uh, 
de algo aburrido. ¿eh? Bored. Bored. Ok, uh -huh. eh, I, I have a question, teacher, uh -huh. when, the, when the, 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 the last uh, sentence uh, about uh, reporting speech imperative. Uh -huh. uh, uh, because uh, today I was trying to, to do the, the homework about, uh -huh. this, about this topic, but uh, I, I don't understand. Uh, to to do the the homework okay let's go to the platform okay we can check it don't worry um just a moment tengo el cell phone a ver si me no me cuesta a ver yo le voy a poner le voy a compartir la pantalla acá no se preocupe ah okay thank you just a moment en el progress no es en el curso el curso ajá el curso ajá section one Manuel eh, el segundo. Okay. Acá está. Sí, es. Es en el. En la tarea, la, es la primera. Ah, la... oh. <ríe> bueno. Es el video. Vision. Correcto. Ok. Vale, veamos. Read the following commands and type them using reported speech. Ok, number one. He said exercise regularly. Ok. In bare brackets. Ajá. Uh -huh. Tell. Entonces le está diciendo que para, para reportar esa oración, mm -hmm. usted, va, usted la va a anunciar con el verbo tell. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ajá. ¿Y qué les dije del verbo te la hora? ¿Se acuerda? Oh. Ajá, pero... Ajá. Les dije en la hora, y creo que usted lo leyó, fíjese. Um, tell, lo ocupamos, pero siempre que yo ocupo tell, va a ir una persona ah, sujeto después. Es correcto. Entonces, ¿cómo lo pondría usted? He. He told me. Uh -huh. ¿Y qué va? La preposición tú. He told me. To, uh, to, to exercise regularly. regularly. Uh -huh. He told me he, to exercise regularly. Uh -huh. To, oh, okay. Uh -huh. He told me to exercise regularly. Yes. In y the esta, second. Se lo voy a explicar de esta forma. Uh -huh. He told me to exercise Digámoslo hasta ahí, solo para motivo de explicarlo. Ok, sí, sí. Les decía yo, ahorita se los acabo de decir al final, y esa regla universal, Manuel. Siempre, siempre que tengan los verbos seguidos, sí. a la preposición sí. en medio. Esto, uh, también, sí. esto también aplica en algunos casos cuando hay dos verbos, y si, aunque hay un sujeto, por ejemplo, he told uh -huh. me, pero el verbo sigue siendo told. He told me. Uh -huh. Entonces, y seguido de otro verbo, entonces va a ir ¿Sí? en una posición media. Y tomé two exercises. Ok. Eso es básicamente como el, el, el porqué. Sí. Número okay. two. Veamos. Uh, don't turn off the light. Uh -huh. Para reportarlo, usted va a decir, pulanito me ordenó a mí. <ríe> Mm, okay. Es que no lo alcanzo a ver ahí. <risa> está. Bueno, eso más grande. Ahí. Ahí está. Ok. Order. Order. Uh -huh. Se puede decir. He, uh -huh. he ordered me. Uh -huh. Order. Hay que cambiarlo uh -huh. en el pasado. Ajá, eso sí. He ordered me. Order me. Pero ¿qué va a pasar he, aquí? Eh, en vez de don't, usted va a decir to not. He ordered me to not to turn off the lights. Ok. Uh -huh. Veamos en el number three. Leamos. The sign says don't drink and drive. Uh -huh. Request. Uh -huh. The sign requested. Uh -huh. The sign requested, 
me or design requests me. De nuevo, igual que acá, do not drink mm -hmm. and drive. Design request me. Do not drink and drive. Drink. Ah, ok, tú. Ajá. Le voy a mostrar las respuestas acá, mira. Para que vea que lo, cómo lo va poniendo. Porque aquí hay, aquí hay un, un factor que no, no le han puesto en la plataforma. Por ejemplo, acá dice, don't turn off the lights. Order. Mm -hmm. Pero Order. no dicen que cuál sujeto va a usar usted, si he o she. Entonces, si no pone el corrector, la plataforma no lo va a tomar no, bien. Por eso que y, no lo pude hacer. Y es para que ustedes adivinen. Así que, mm -hmm. si gusta, ajá, para que la vea ahí. Es, al menos esa manera. No, ok, ok. Y le quiero tomar sprint, print screen también. Screen check. Ok. All right. Thank you, teacher. Uh, yes, right. Es que, que estaba bien difícil, teacher. Todas las anteriores mm -hmm. estaban un poco más fácil. Ah. Pero este sí está un poco complicado. Sí, sí, la verdad es que sí. Pero lo... mañana se lo voy a reforzar ese tema porque es con lo del imperatives. Pero acá, uh -huh. de, por sí le, de por sí le digo, la plataforma acá no le da un sujeto. No, no hay forma de que ustedes lo adivinen. Entonces, ahí, ajá. Uh -huh. <risa> <risa> um, pero mire, ¿y cómo sentí la clase? Very good, teacher. Se entendió. Sí. I, I... I, I said uh, myself, uh, uh, this teacher, when, when my, uh, my wife uh, into the, the bedroom, because mm -hmm. I received my, 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 the class in my bedroom, uh -huh. uh, hey, hey, honey, come, come, we have a new teacher. <laughs> come and see. <laughs> We got a new teacher. Well, really? Yes. Only one month. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah, and she had to do something else. I don't know what happened to her, but she's, she'll be back soon. But in this month, I will finish it with you guys. So. Okay. No, no yeah. problem, teacher. Yeah. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm well, glad something to... needs more explanation or you need more help or reinforcement no, or teacher. more practice, let me know, okay? Yes, teacher. Thank you. I'm that's all. Help you guys. All right. Perfect. Have a good night, Manuel. Have a beautiful night, teacher.